Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to our evening Dhamma session. Tonight I'd like to talk a little bit about samsara. Samsara. Samsara is a word, I think it's one of the more commonly known words in Buddhism. Even if you're not a Buddhist, if you know a little bit about Buddhism, you've probably heard this word before. <coughs> we have in the, in the Dhammapada, Chattunang Arya Satchanang I think it's in the Dhammapada actually, I'm not sure Chattunang Arya Satchanang Yathabhutang Adasana Sangsaritang Dighamattanang Tasu Tasu Eva Jatisu Not seeing these four noble truths we have wandered on in this law we have wandered on for a long time Digham. Digama, Digama Dhanang. All this long road in samsara, Tasu Dasveva Jati, so from life to life, birth to birth. So samsara is, is, is the universe as we know it doesn't actually refer to the physical universe. There is no physical universe in, in Buddhism. Right? It's not real. Physical space is something that is dependent on or derived from matter, which of course is still dependent on experience. So in a sense, when we, the world, the universe, and all the planets and so on, it's only there because we experience it. You know, it only exists in the context of our experience. And quantum physics has something to say along those lines, I think. But no, what, what sangsara is in, in Buddhism is um, this rebirth, this, the path of the individual, the path of being birth and death really and samsara is really all about being born again samsara means when you die you start all over or you continue on in, in whatever way and so we talk about the many realms of rebirth there are the 31 realms in Theravada Buddhism but I think that's just a convention my guess is you could subdivide it into many, many more realms. The hell realms, for example, there's many, many different hells that one can go to. But at the top you have the Brahma realms, which if you practice Samatha meditation, you go there. Below that you have the angel realms, the Deva realms, where if you do lots of super good deeds, if you're a very kind and gentle and generous person, moral and ethical, you go to these heavens. And then we have the human realms. If you're if you're reasonably ethical and moral and good, <coughs> you'll be born as a human. And the animal realms. Or if you're full of delusion, you'll go there. We have the ghost realms. If you're full of greed, you'll go there. We have the hell realms. Where if you're really well, if you're full of anger, fear spite, hatred, malice, all this, you'll go to hell. So in a conventional sense, this is what samsara means. It means we wander around aimlessly, really. You know, we have goals and aims from time to time, but they're short-sighted, and 
meaningless in the larger context of samsara, of our wandering from life to life. So sometimes we're angels, sometimes we're gods, often we're humans, and often we're animals, ghosts, or even sometimes born in hell. It's somewhat of a um, of a foreign paradigm, I think, for the modern world. So we've become accustomed to thinking in terms of the physical world, uh, this uh, conceptual world, really, where we conceive of space and time, and we have all sorts of formulas and um, theories about space-time. And in fact, both space and time are not quite what we think they are. Well, not really what we think they are at all. In fact. Space is just a derivation of matter, and time is really just about the changes inherent in the present moment, which is the only time that really exists. So, but if you become familiar with this experiential paradigm of being reborn again and again, this way of looking at the world, it really puts everything into perspective in, in a way that many of us don't think. I think for a lot of people it goes well beyond their reasons for practicing meditation. You don't find many people nowadays saying, hey, I'm going to go meditate so I can be free from all the many realms of rebirth. Most of us don't even have a conception of them the other, word, other realms, or, or being reborn even at all, perhaps. Nonetheless, it being the, the nature of reality, as understood by the Buddhists and by the Buddha, it's useful for us to think of it as the, the larger picture. In the conventional sense, it's useful because it helps you. I really understand the depth of our practice, that yes, it's about stress reduction, yes, it's about overcoming our defilements, but ultimately it's, there's a broader context that uh, we've been traveling, we've been wandering on ad infinitum, ad infinitum. With no end in sight, no beginning in sight. We don't know how long we've been going. Perhaps it's eternal. And in the end it becomes meaningless. So, uh, so you realize that all of this is... Well, it's, I mean, it's quite exciting, really, to think about all the many realms you can be born in. It's something new, but as you consider, as you learn, and as you meditate, you start to see that it's all just wandering on. It's all meaningless, pointless, useless. But again, I think that's, that goes far beyond what mo most people think about when they undertake the practice of meditation. I mean, unfortunately, you don't have to think that big. I mean, that's something that's profound on the level of a Buddha to think about these things and to really realize that this is enough, that they've had enough with samsara. But samsara, I mean, that, that's just the conceptual nature of it. I mean, in reality, samsara, if you want to go deeper, it's just the cycle. So we often hear about the cycle of birth, old age, sickness, and death. That's what we're talking about, that no matter where we go, there is always going to be this being starting on a new journey and, and going through the motions of learning and adapting and, and clinging and, and settling down in some sort of measure of stability, only to be uprooted again at the moment of death and be cast out and sent on our way to wander again. And so if we understand, if 
we want to understand it, a much easier way to understand it is this way in terms of one life. It's still conceptual, but much more useful. Much more useful to think about what it means to be alive. No matter where we're born, what is it? What is involved? And we look and we see we're making the same mistakes again and again. If this has been infinite, if we're doing this forever, it's really quite shameful that we're still making so many mistakes. And it's certainly a sign that this isn't the ideal. This, isn't as good. this can't be as good as it gets. But if we really want to understand samsara, of course, we have to go beyond concepts. And so the, the, the ultimate way, the third way we can understand samsara is in terms of moment-to-moment -moment wandering on of sorts. This mindless, zombie-like state that we find ourselves in where we go through the motions of indulging and clinging and judging and avoiding and running and chasing the good and the bad out of delusion and out of blindness and not seeing clearly because we don't see the Four Noble Truths that we don't have to even think about being reborn or, or going to this realm or that realm ultimately it's all just experience and no matter where we go we're not going to be free from the senses from experience And so this is really what we come to understand through the meditation, that reality is just made up of experiences. And experiences continue on and on, and we wander on and on. And we wander through experiences without any real rhyme or reason. That's what you start to see in meditation, right? That, oh, I'm wandering around like a lost person. And you start to cultivate this sense of direction, a compass, a way to go, a path. You start to see the right way, the right path. Not as going here or going there, but as stopping, as not wandering anymore. As heading in the right direction, if you will, in the sense of actually not going anywhere. And so we focus on the five aggregates, the four satipatthana, or the six senses, however you want to describe it, but we focus on experience. And so our act of being objective, of reminding ourselves, and of learning to see clearly, this is about really understanding, well, seeing through the, the concept of samsara entirely. You see that what we mean by some, what we call samsara is just our own delusions and our own conceptions of, of our experiences, which turn out to be impermanent, unsatisfying, uncontrollable, not belonging to us, not being amenable to our wishes, our expectations. And we see that we're lost, that our ambitions and our drives and our wants and our wishes are all merely a cause for more stress and suffering. And so we start to settle down. You don't have to worry about leaving samsara. <laughs> samsara just leaves you as, you as you let go of it. Samsara leaves you. That's the truth. You become less and less inclined to pull it in, to take it in, to, to, to build it up. But less and less inclined to create samsara around you until eventually you stop, you cease. You liberate yourself. So there you go, there's the Dhamma for tonight, a little bit about samsara. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a good night.